Kaleidoscope Eyes, written and illustrated by Lara Robinson. Every night as she got ready for bed, Empathema would become a talking head. She liked to ask her dad about stuff at school she had learned. She did so with a furrowed brow, looking concerned. Daddy, she would always say. Is it true that Santa is not real and there is no sleigh? That's a big question, my clever little youth. Do you think you're old enough now to hear the truth? Empathema would nod her head and put a fist in the air. I'm old enough now that only the truth is fair. We can only believe in the things we can see. You have to have proof to say it's true. Wouldn't you agree? Empathema had never seen Santa, or Rudolph, or Dancer. And there in thought, she'd found her answer. Daddy, she asked one Thursday, is it true that there are monsters in the wardrobes and at night they could come and tickle my earlobes? That's a funny question, my creative little baby. Do you think you can answer that for yourself, maybe? Empathema went and opened all the cupboard doors. There were no monsters hiding in the chest of drawers. With that, she had solved her own worry and went back to her dinner of chicken curry. Once she got a little older, her question started to be much bolder. Daddy, she asked Mr. Dennis one Friday, is it true that I could be taken away? If all the aliens arrive on our planet, could I be kidnapped by the alien Queen Janet? That's a scary question, my brave little kid. So beguiled. But let me ask you, have you ever seen aliens in the sky taking a child? Daddy! She was particularly concerned about her question on this Monday. Is it true that the Earth is in dismay? Mr Dennis did not reply. He simply stared at the tap water running by. Empathema looked at her dad through the blurry vision of tears, hoping he would be able to help her like with all her other little fears. Is it true that it is our fault? Mr. Dennis put down the bath salt. That's a stupid question, Empathema. Who suggested to you this moral dilemma? It's what all the teachers are saying at school. They said that to the earth, people have been selfish and cruel. I don't want to hear any more of this nonsense. Global warming should not be on our conscience. As I always answer your queries, and I'll say it again, Unless you have evidence, then there is no reason to go down that lane of pain. Mr. Dennis was so frustrated with the question that it came out with some aggression. His hand splashed the bathwater and straight into her eyes, Empathema developed two bath salt styes. It was like she had kaleidoscopic vision, with her blue and green lenses blending together like in cartoon television. I have not seen anything in my world change. To suggest that humans messed with the climate is truly strange. Empathema's pupils began to distort. The world in front of her started to contort. The tap water was no longer filling the bath, but was rather taking a murderous path. Before her eyes, she did see a Pacific island swallowed by the rising sea. The next week, Mr. Dennis was driving his daughter to school. With his car running low, they decided to stop for fuel. The amount of carbon dioxide I pollute is so small, the Earth's natural carbon dioxide would not notice the little bit extra at all. Empathema's eyes started to sting and blur. Once again, something weird started to occur. The pollution from cars and factories in the street started to form a scary black cloud impossible to defeat. The cloud revealed itself over New Delhi. Masks over the people's faces, the streets so grim and smelly. The local people walked around in front of her eyes, people spitting, choking, crying, both women, children and guys. The next day,
day, her father woke up cold sober and mentioned how cool it was for October. He grabbed the remote and turned the heat on high. And happy with that, he then uttered a sigh. You see, Australia is not getting any warmer. To this climate crisis, I will not be a brainwashed conformer. Empathema's eyes started to flicker and twitch. When she looked back at the thermostat, there seemed to be a glitch. No longer was her dad merely changing up how the house felt. He was heating the world as she watched an arctic ice cap melt. As the mercury liquid continued to rise, polar bears' lives she had to eulogize. His daughter had been pretty upset as of late, probably because she was thinking of the world's impending end date. Although he did not know what was wrong, Mr. Dennis hoped it would not last too long. A week later, he brought his daughter to work, hoping she could sit there and do some artwork. He pulled out a stack of paper from his desk, but Empathema saw it as grotesque. Her eyes had already tightened and shifted, this awful affliction she had again been gifted. Rather than placing the drawing papers on her knee, Mr. Dennis's hands were chainsawing a tree. One less tree to eat away our CO2. And what now would the animals who lived in it do? For dinner that night, all the cousins were coming to eat. So Mr. Dennis thought he could cook up a treat. Some lamb shanks, steaks, chicken ribs, and even some crackling. It was all ready on the table when his family came in tackling. Empathema did not eat the meal. After everything she'd seen, a flesh course was not ideal. As her family dug into muscle, bone and skin, she felt like she may need to throw up in the bin. But soon, her vision caught up with her mind. And believe me when I say the images were unkind. Empathema's eyes showed the dinner as alive. Eaten by humans before they could cross. All this waste and excess, there was a lot of grain to eat and process. Grain that could have fed a small starving nation instead went into the stomachs of a rich white population. Sitting at the table, Empathema became distraught. How could her father be denying all this despite the evidential onslaught? Mr. Dennis was running the taps, pumping the fuel, controlling the heat. But somehow the consequences he never did meet. The harrowing sounds of the victims plagued her mind. The cacophony and oral offense. Soon it became so loud she couldn't even think. Her heart grew heavy and began to droop and sink. Her dad turned to look at her, confusion in his face. Is that you making all that noise around the place? Empathema had been pretty quiet all night. He could hear someone screaming but no one in sight. Wait. You can hear all the danger too? I thought it was just happening to me, not to you. I can't hear you, hun. Under all this fuss, we'll have to find somewhere else to discuss. In the background of the noise, she could hear a faint knock. And what came next will give you quite a shock. Empathema opened the front door to the street. That was the day the world and her would meet.